It's the first ever multi-part What's In Your Kit, the series where you send in unedited footage of your gig bag, pelican case, or tool kit so we can all take a look and learn together. Kevin Thurber's kit is coming up next. Visit DCSoundUp.com for all of the kits in this series, along with links and other info. Sign up for the email newsletter there too. You'll get an email only when I have new content to share and never miss another giveaway or written post again. Linked below at DCSoundUp.com. Welcome back to the channel. This is a fun what's in your kit as I'm gonna be breaking it up into multiple parts. Most folks send in 20 or 30 minutes of unedited footage from unpacking their kits, but Kevin went all out with three separate clips totaling over an hour of footage. I really appreciate his enthusiasm, and after watching what he sent, I didn't want to chop it to bits to make just one short video. Kevin has some real experience and great insights into what he uses some of the gear for specifically, along with why he chose each piece, and I wanted to leave all of that intact. So for the first time in the series, I'll break this one into multiple parts. I'm gonna be editing his footage a bit for the pace, but otherwise you'll get to see everything. So stick around and keep an eye out for his future episodes here. But for now, please welcome to the channel and help me thank Mr. Kevin Thurber. Hi, my name is Kevin Thurber. I'm a freelance audio engineer. And uh, today we're gonna to take a look at uh, what's in my gig bag. So what we're gonna start with first is just what goes in my pockets every day. No matter what I'm doing, whether I'm working, whether I'm off, that's what's laid out here. So first of all is my wallet, which is uh, the One Star Park Sloper Senior. Um, one thing I like about this wallet, it's a nice big wallet, and it's actually designed to hold a notebook inside of it. Um, what I have inside of here when I travel or tour is usually actually my passport rather than a notebook, just because that works better for me. I like it, it's leather. It makes me feel nice, it's blue. Um, but one big feature about it is that it holds a pen. This is a machine era brass pen, which uses a Pilot G2 insert. So, you know, you can just grab a Pilot G2 pen and you have a nice writing experience no matter where you are. This either lives in my pocket or my jacket pocket. I pretty often wear a jacket when I'm traveling or a sweatshirt. It is very large, you'll notice you're carrying this. Uh, on my belt is a Leatherman Charge. Um, I just like this because of the swappable bits but also because the steel in the knives is actually pretty high quality. Being a live sound human and uh, an EDC nerd, I also kind of have a thing for knives. So that was the main reason I went with this. There's no reason why you couldn't go with like a sidekick or a wingman or something cheaper. If you happen to lose it, you won't feel as bad about it all the time. Um, and in this, in this, you also have the bit kit. So now the idea of always having a couple hex keys, a couple Torx drivers, a mini screwdriver, that's huge to me. I do wish this tool had scissors. That's one thing that is frustrating about it constantly. Uh, dual tip Sharpie is always great. So you have big labeling, small labeling. I'm pretty, I really enjoy the dual tip Sharpies over just a regular Sharpie. It makes me feel good to, to be able to write big and small, especially when labeling console like a CL5 or something and you have those meter bridges that are so narrow and uh, writing on console tape is just a pain with anything besides a Sharpie. Eagle Tech, uh, what is this? D25A. Uh, I really prefer lights that use standard size batteries because with wireless mics and everything else, there's usually a ton of standard batteries around everywhere if you're not using a rechargeable system. So the idea that this just, just takes a single AA and can get nice and bright, but also pretty dim depending on the settings you have for it. The clicky is nice, the pocket clip's nice. This usually just tucks in my back pocket along with the Sharpie. Uh, my keys, you know, there's nothing special here. I have this little, you know, utility blade holder slash bottle opener, and then some of these Edimonic 20 dB musician's ear plugs. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way these sound most of the time. Uh, a lot of the gigs that I mix, I don't mix that loud, unless it's like a DJ or similar, where what I'll, or, you know, a loud rock show, uh, where what I'll do is I'll pop these in and out between songs. Mostly what I do is corporate and musical theater events. Um, this Altoids tin doesn't always go in my pocket, but usually is tucked into a sweatshirt or a jacket pocket. And what I keep in here is just some gum. So this, <laughs> see if that's getting in frame. It's pretty large because it's stuffed out. One thing about me is that I do end up overstuffing almost everything that I have. I like to make full use of the space that I have and whatever whatever it is that I'm that I'm transporting. This is the Packed One travel bag, and I just recently switched to this from the Air Travel Pack Two. Um, and so far, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it, it's a little bit smaller, at least for the amount of stuff you can fit inside. 
But the way the organization works in this and what it allows me to carry safely has been really good. Also, something that encourages me to slim down what I have is, is pretty great. So I guess let's start with just the main pockets. So one thing about this bag that's nice is it clamshells open from the side. A lot of bags clamshell open from the top. Whereas this one, if you undo the main zipper, it sort of flops open like this. And right away you can see, I always carry a water bottle. I have my Sony and the R7506 headphones in here, always with me. You know, they're just what I'm used to, what I'm happy with, and what I use, have used for, you know, the past decade. So they work uh, also in this pouch because there's a little extra room. I have just a, you know, regular aux cable. This one's pretty long, so it's handy in front of house if you throw up a DI. And then just a shorty dual XLR to stereo mini jack. Um, you know, I don't like using these, but the ease of use and the fact that it's always here just in my backpack, I can plug into a console and go, that's why it's here. You know, I don't have to dig out a DI, I don't have to dig out anything else. This is just, I got it. Also in here is a tool pouch. We'll come back to this. This is just a pile of hand tools. So the idea with this bag is if I was just doing a regular um, stagehand gig, if I was just an A2 on something, if I was just doing, you know, an electrics call, as a freelancer, uh, sometimes you just fill your schedule with whatever gigs you can get, especially nowadays. So this has all the hand tools that I would need to do those gigs uh, without any additional audio gear. There's some foam here in this, this interior pouch, the first one here. And here's where I keep my Windows laptop. So um, I don't always carry this with me, but recently I have been, just because I've been doing some gigs that use uh, PowerSoft Harmonia software, which is only a, a PC piece of software and you can boot camp and that's certainly true but I, i've run into issues with with running virtual box and boot camp um it can double as a tablet you know it actually has pen storage in it too so you don't lose the pen um <laughs> and this is great for system tuning being able to walk around and tune your system on here and the other reason i carry this is for uh any gigs where i am rf coordinator um running an ias or just having a second laptop to do RF coordination, you know, wireless workbench or, or uh, WSM is fantastic. Not having to, to worry about running everything on one laptop if you're doing playback or if you're doing recording or anything like that. Just having a second machine for system control, system monitoring, fully separate from your, your show computer is, is pretty great. So this mesh pocket right here unzips, flips over. Uh, right now I just have a Patagonia waterproof jacket in here for if I get caught in the rain and just a you know, nylon hat um, if it gets cold. There's this little zipper pouch right here. And inside I just have like a little change purse for quarters and um, another set of earplugs, a lighter, you know, a stereo quarter to eighth, uh, greenie, some of this lost mouthwash stuff, uh, a couple lanyard passes. So I don't like wearing lanyards around my neck. So this, this, is the, this is that main pocket we just opened is this middle one. And then this here is the laptop pocket or the way it's built. There's a frame sheet in here. You can look up this backpack and see a lot more reviews and such on it if you want to actually get into the details. But open this up right on top. Right now I have an iPad. Um, I, again, I don't always carry this. It's more of a, if I need to co control a console, I, I can bring this, but I don't like carrying it. I just don't find myself having to do that that often these days. More in this, but I can always toss it in the top here. So another thing that's nice is I, there's this big open spot for your laptop. So what I actually have in here is a few things. So I have a laptop case, and then I have this little PC accessories pouch. So it's just a share mic bag. And there's a lot of little bits inside. <laughs> um, so primarily I have this Glyph. Uh, I think this is one terabyte, maybe two terabyte um, USB-C solid state drive. And this kind of contains my sound effects library. If I have to do any recording, I need to transfer any files that are big. That's what this is really for. Um, but mostly it's a sound effects library project transfer li um, drive. And then I got a USB-C to USB-C and a USB-C to A. Plug for that. Uh, MacBook Lightning to Ethernet, which is nice. And then I have this USB 3.0 hub slash Ethernet adapter because both my Windows and my Mac laptop do not have Ethernet jacks. That's why I have two of these. Uh, iLock, um, other licenses that don't work on iLock, Waves and such. 
uh, a quick little network jumper, one of those flat cables, just nice to have if I need to connect to something, I don't have to dig through everything. Uh, another small Altoids case, and inside here is a bunch of little accessories. You can see this one's got quite beat up. So we have a lightning, um, or sorry, that was a Thunderbolt Ethernet, right? And this is a lightning to headphone jack. I don't have an iPhone, but it's always kind of necessary. Another quarter to eighth, uh, D and B CAN bus, uh, bus end, um, SIM card slot opener, uh, micro SD to SD adapter. And then, uh, one of the little IEM cleaners that comes with sure IEMs focus, focus. This is great. Like, I don't, I don't know how they came up with this tool, but this, just the way this is designed, this little wire end and this little pick works fantastic for cleaning IEMs. So uh, I also keep a spare SIM card, my spare SIM card in there because I don't know, why not carry it? <laughs> uh, I have a Linux boot and a Windows boot. If I never ever need to reinstall um, Windows on a machine, Windows 10, or, you know, if I have a serious issue with machine, I need to get some files off of it. I have a Linux boot drive. And then I have, um, actually I actually don't know why this is living in here right now. And then I have a bunch of drives for, I have one drive that uh, has a bunch of installers on it. So I download all my installers for all my software, Windows and Mac, keep them on one drive. Uh, firmware here, these are all labeled S21 because that's what my last, the last tour I was A1 on was using as a console, but I, I just haven't changed the labels. So S21 firmware, but I have a bunch of other console firmwares on here and I'll put the, pl plug this into a computer, take all the others off before plugging into the console. I don't like to have multiple firmwares on a drive before I plug it in the console. Processor backup. So just separating console files, which is this last one, and the processor files, which is this, this orange one, um, on the drives. Just organizationally in my brain, it's nice to, to not have to dig through so many files and to have enough space. We have uh, my Mac laptop, my main laptop case, and it has this nice front zipper pocket. So this is the charger here. I like to have a long charger. Um, I also have a keyboard because I'm starting to have some issues. This is, I think, a 2013 MacBook Pro, 13 inch, and my keyboard is starting to have some issues. So what you can do is you can run a script on the MacBook, disable the built-in keyboard, and use this. There, are the issues that they're paying to service on your own. There's just it's to get to it, you have to dig from the bottom all the way to the t up to the keyboard bed to actually replace it, and I haven't had the time to do that yet. 2013, 13 inch. Nothing exciting there. But like I said, that's uh, QLab, Pro Tools, Reaper. There's all sorts of small notebooks and such that you can that you can carry and use. But I just find that when I'm in a meeting or we're having a quick discussion about show notes, anything like that, having a full-size notepad is fantastic. Actually, I'm not sure what's in here right now, so I just stop, step off frame. Yeah, I have my union card in here right now, so I'm just going to set that off to the side. Being able to throw any like important documents or anything in here is fantastic. And then I have just a small notepad on here, in here as well. And we can go back to the backpack. So this top quick access pocket is the stuff that I'm gonna grab for the quickest. So in here I have hand sanitizer, some uh, fold up sunglasses from Rove, another notebook, which is more of a journaly thing. And I have a Fisher space pen. Uh, I have some Raycon earbuds that I mostly bought to support one of my favorite creators on YouTube. And I kind of regret this purchase, but it is nice to have, these are my only fully wireless earbuds. So just if I'm watching a video or something, I can grab them, pop them in and just roll. They're definitely not worth the money, but they're fine. The clip bar, sort of always keep a couple clip bars on me. Uh, this is a lead holder, sort of something I'm experimenting with. So what it is, is a really fat piece of graphite. So when you're taking notes, there's no chance of it breaking or if you're marking up wood to cut or anything like that. I, I, I'm not fully sold on it yet, but I'm, I'm playing with it. Another large Altoids tin, and this is also full of gum. Quick access pocket. I have my Sure 535 earbuds. And these are like my main IEMs if I need them. I have the wireless adapter. I uh, have a charging cable. I have a quarter to eighth. Also in here, I do have a cheaper Leatherman, a Wingman sidekick. Uh, I don't I don't know why I keep this in here. I've barely touched it yet. Uh, I think because I lost track of my charge and a gig, it ended up coming back around to me a couple of gigs later because they knew it was mine. Also in here, I have one of these cheap little Energizer Flashlights, again, uses standard batteries. I like it for just having a nice big area light. If I have to throw it on top of something or if I'm working in a rack, I can jam it in there. And then a headlamp, same deal. I like this one a lot. Black Diamond, this is a gift from a fellow audio engineer. Really appreciate this one. One thing that's great about this is it has a locking feature and that's why it's flashing red like this is you can hold down the two buttons and lock it so it won't turn on your backpack and die, which is always my issue with headlamps and backpacks. Carry some green tape, which is what I usually use to label my own things. 
but it's also just a nice neutral color for, for e-taping things. Here's some uh, adhesive medical tape, mostly for medical purposes, not for mic rigging or anything like that. This Altoids tin uh, is a little first aid kit. So just some band-aids and some um, bacitracin, I think some like Advil, some other stuff is just jammed in here. CPR mask, bottle opener is very important. Uh, the belt pouch for the Eagle Tac flashlight, a little precision screwdriver, just a handy little thing to have, you know, flippable bits, a fork, <laughs> and then there's a little pen loop in the side here. So I have a pen jammed in there. And then I just have a bunch of pens, a couple extra pens, pencils, Sharpies, silver Sharpie, etc. And in here is a lot of like creature comfort things. I have this little low profile tri-tap, which I am a huge fan of rather than like the weird wing out ones. This pouch here, I have the Jackery <laughs> battery phone battery, which is a thing that um, DC Sound Up turned me on to and I've been super happy with. You know, getting multiple charges out of out of a, a box that's not crazy. USB-C cable for the phone. Uh, quick charge brick for the USB-C cable if I'm going to the wall. Um, I have a, a buff, a wool buff here. Um, this can be a hat, this can be a neck buff, this could be, uh, what I usually use it for is um, uh, like a blindfold. So what I'm looking for, like when you're on a plane, you need to take a nap or in a hotel room during the day. This Matador nano towel. So this is nanofiber towel and this can do like a full, it, like it can function almost as well as a full size bath towel. And then some extra socks because again, extra socks can easily make you happy. So this is one of the sound tools pouches. They're just, you know, it's a cheaper version of the client pouch and it's unrelated. So I like it a lot. Uh, full LMP set. Uh, has been vital multiple times working on electronics, working on cables, different things. I don't like the multi uh, LMP sets because they don't have all the sizes. That's it. If they had all the sizes and it was it was packed as small as these did, I would just carry that. This is an Adam Savage item. He turned me on to this. Uh, his tool tips videos. This is uh, you know a very small, fine retractable knife with a breakable blade. But the cool thing about this is there's extra blades in the body of the tool. An exacto style knife and some extra blades for it. I don't like how big this case is, but it seems like the best solution out there. And it came with a knife. This Weehan multi-bit <laughs> screwdriver is kind of ridiculous and I kind of love it. So you have this here, this bit um, lock, flip it around. And then this crazy like Jurassic Park style DNA holder that has an absurd number of bits in here. Here, Huge fan of this and Weehan drivers in general. Uh, it's a little fat for my hand, the handle, but it works well. Kinepex Cobras you know, the best way to grab something that is weird. Grabbers, these are flat jaw, not flat, flat jaw, but you know, flatter jaw with the teeth and the kinepex are more of a round fastener grabber. Flush cutters and small pliers from Hako. Uh, I have, these are pretty new, haven't had a chance to test drive them yet, but I've had issues with breaking the Exolite cutters. So I'll try these out. Mini vice grips. Um, these are great for holding connectors wall soldering. It's actually my go-to method of holding a connector while soldering it. You know, you can grab a quarter inch, you can grab an XLR, you can grab most other things like this and just set it down on the table and it'll sit there flat. But it's also nice for um, opening up some of those Sennheiser screw connectors if you have to get in there to solder them. Having something that can really grab something small, super handy. Um, some larger sort of electrician style pliers. These are cheap. They work. Um, some cheap diagonal cutters. They work. Scissors, um, like I said, I don't really have anything else that has scissors handy. So having some medium sized scissors is great. Uh, a center punch, because I'm not good at drilling <laughs> and drilling through metal is hard. So just being able to easily center punch something, um, it's great. Of course, a uh, crescent wrench. This is a eight inch crescent wrench with a little cheap tool lanyard on it. Just something, you know, I don't plan to drop this, but it's nice to have something attaching it to you. So that's that tool pouch, and that's that's my that's my everyday backpack slash stagehand backpack slash every gig backpack. So next we'll be taking a look at my audio A1 Pelican. I'm just gonna take some time to pack up my backpack, and I'll be back with you. Or I might cut this into multiple videos. We'll see what what happens.
All right, and thanks again to Kevin for that look at his everyday carry kit and his kind of freelance and casual backpack that he takes out all the time with him. I know there are a lot of folks out there who would love to have their entire kit be that comprehensive, but if you'll believe it, Kevin has two more Pelican cases to show us. That's the specialty and job-specific gear, though. I don't think he's taking it all out just for fun on every gig. We will take a deep dive into both of those with Kevin in an upcoming episode. So in the meantime, leave any questions you have for him in the comments and help me thank Kevin once again for sharing all of this with us so completely. Linked below also are the details at dcsoundup.com forward slash submit your kit to find out how you can be in an upcoming episode in this series. I can't promise that anybody else will get multiple episodes, but you never know. If it's a good one, I'll definitely consider it. Thanks for watching. Send in your videos. I'll see you next time.